Good morning, praise the Lord, Word praise Church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Word Church. Lord. We came to lift up the name of Jesus yes. this morning, amen. We came to give him glory. We came to magnify his name. Come on in the, in the, in the sanctuary. If you're here, stand on your feet. If you're at home, get to your feet. If in your car, if you can pull over and give God a quick praise. Hallelujah. We came to lift him up. The scripture yes. tells us to praise ye the Lord. Yes. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and the harp. Praise him with the tremble and the dance. Praise him with the string instruments and the organ. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. God, we give you glory this morning. God, we praise your name. We lift you up. We glorify you. We magnify your name today. God, we ask you right now to come into the sanctuary. Come into our living rooms. Come into our car. Come into our headpiece. God, wherever we are right now, we ask you, Lord, to set the atmosphere of praise, to set the atmosphere of worship. God, we thank you, Lord, for giving us this day. We thank you for all the things that you brought us through. We thank you for all the things that you brought us over. So, God, as we get ready for worship this morning, we give thanks to you, God. We give thanks to you, God, for all the things that we've come over. God, we ask you right now, Lord, to just set us right now, Lord. Get our hearts and minds on one accord. We thank you for the preached word that's going to come forth, Lord, that is going to lift us up, Lord, and edify the body, God, but give you glory. Yes, all of these things we ask you in your most powerful name, Jesus. Amen, amen. and amen. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes. for he is worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks. yes, unto the Lord, for he is good, yes, he is good. Oh, give thanks, oh, give thanks. yes, unto the Lord.
Everybody shout hallelujah. Somebody say blessings and glory. Come on, somebody say an honor. It all belongs to the Lord. On this Sunday morning, this is the day the Lord has made. Come on, let's rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody here glad to be in Christ and in his house today? Praise the Lord, Dr. Don. Praise the Lord. Amen. Sister Boyd, we're so glad to be here today. Greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And on behalf of he who is our living Lord and Redeemer, I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord just one more time. He didn't have to let us live, but he did, and I'm glad about it. A dynamic duo, sisters, thank you all for leading us in praise and worship. To our band, thank you for leading us in praise and worship. To all of you who are in the sanctuary, those of you online, we're excited to be in worship together today. Everybody shout amen. Well, it's already... Uh, has been said at the beginning of service with the Reverend Rosalind Craig, it is time for us to give now. Brothers and sisters, we're excited about it. I'm going to ask you, please, ma'am, please, sir, prepare your gifts to give. Those of you that are online, if you're online and you're watching Pastor Ford, say, Pastor, I'm ready to give. Just type it. Say, good morning, Pastor, I'm ready to give. Listen, we're here to give at this point in worship because God has given so much to us. And so, brothers and sisters, our goal is to be vessels that God gives through uh, he's going to give through us as he gives to us. And so remember that the tithe, the word tithe means 10. It represents a 10% of our increase or of what we receive. So out of every dollar, God asks for what? A dime. And so we're going to ask you to please give at minimum. If you are physically able, if you are literally able, give your tithe and your offering. And uh, watch this. That which we cannot do, God can do. On the screen. You'll notice again that there are three ways to give. They're all outlined on your screen. You can see you can give by way of the church app. You can give by way of paper envelope. You can give online uh, via the church website. You can give in person. And so today, Deacon James Boyd, who was with Pastor this morning in early worship, is also with me now. I'm going to whisper a word of prayer and ask that all of you would please, ma'am, please, sir, bow your head and close your eyes with me. And then Deacon Boyd will receive any... Um, giving envelopes that you have, and then online watchers again, and in sanctuary uh, persons, if you would like to give. We would so love to have you give this morning, okay? Let's pray and ask God to bless us. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you afresh for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. And Father, we ask now, God, that you'd help us to give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, but cheerfully because you love a cheerful giver. Lord, you know the needs of our church congregation, the needs of the body of Christ. And we know that you always meet our needs according to your riches and glory. We ask you to do it again afresh. In Jesus' name, everybody shout amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We're going to give, and we're going to move on to our sermon, our, our sermonic song. Give right now.
Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for being our strength. Mm. Strength like no other. Yes, yes. Our hope like no other. Our joy like no other. Like no other. Amen. strength 
Lord, this is the day the Lord has made. Again, we will, what now, rejoice, amen, and be glad in it. It's God's day, and so we decided to rejoice and be glad in it. Brother Richards and family, what a joy to see y'all. Thank you all for being here today. Good morning. What a joy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good to see you. Thank you for being here to everyone who's here today. How's everybody feeling? Everybody well? This is God's day, and we're excited about it. Uh, I want to ask all of you that are here uh, this morning, first again, uh, not just to the Richards family only, but to everyone here, thank you for being here. Would you join me as we stand together? Can I ask God to bless us again? I want to thank you, Sheila. Thank you, Angie, for leading us in worship by way of song and voice. They do it uh, every Sunday, and uh, I'm so appreciative personally uh, for their ministering to us. And then all the servant leaders who are here today, for young people who are ushering, wow. Man, good to see the young men. Deb, I don't know if she's ushering, but she's greeting. Good to see you. Uh, thank you all for being present. We're going to um, get our copy of God's Word. Online watchers, we greet you with Jesus joy. Would you take your copy of God's Word, if you have it on your phone or if you have a Bible that is a physical book, would you join me this morning as we uh, turn our Bibles to the New Testament record, to the book of St. John, to the Gospel of John, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John chapter 5, beginning at verse number 1, is where we're going to launch from today. John chapter 5, verse number 1. I want to thank you again, Curtis Andrews. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Anthony, for your leadership with music. And uh, we appreciate you so very, very much. When you got John chapter 5, say, I got it. If you're online and you're watching, say, say I got it. Just, just text that pastor, I got it. John chapter 5. We're going to look at this passage and ask God to bless us in wonderful ways. I want to read beginning at verse number one from the New King James Version. Here's how uh, John chapter five, watch this now, verse number one from the King James, New King James Version reads like this. After this, there was a feast of the Jews and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in the Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time into the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Now a certain man was there who had an infirmity for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he already had been in that condition a long time, he said to him, do you want to be made well? Sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool. When the water is stirred up, but while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And that day was the Sabbath. Let me reread verse 8, verse 9. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed, and walked. And the same day was the Sabbath. God bless you. You may be seated. I want to put a tag on this text. I want to choose this morning again uh, as a subject from which to preach. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Would you repeat that after me? What? are you waiting for? I said again, what are you waiting for? Amen. Heads about eyes are closed. Let's pray together and ask God to bless our time. Heavenly Father, we enter your gates again with thanksgiving, your courts with praise. God, we're grateful to you. We bless your name. For Lord, you are good. Your mercy is everlasting. Father, your truth endures to every generation. God, thank you now again for all that you've done and all that you're doing in our lives. Father, I pray that you will remove every distraction, help us to run with patience. The race that is set before us, looking unto you, Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. For, Lord God, you are good, and beside you there is none other. Use us now in your service. Father, produce much fruit from your word. Please think with my mind, speak, speak with my mouth, fill with my heart. And, Father, we pray that your will is done. It's in the matchless and the mighty and the changeless name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray it, God, that we say thank you. Amen. 
without question, without debate, without discussion, let the record reflect that brothers and sisters, all of us today have much to be grateful for. As we look at this past week being the week of Thanksgiving where this nation celebrates, watch this now, giving thanks that we have a lot as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, Tim, to be thankful for. Yet and still, here's a fact that none of us can soon forget. There are many people in the world that due to an overwhelming feeling of suffering and shame, discomfort, and watch this now, depression, they're not thankful. No, there are many people now who are, Dre, thankless. They're thankless because they're overwhelmed. That is, the waters of anxiety have, over, uh, have come over the helm of the boat that they're riding in life through, and they are now thankless. Have you ever been to a place where you find yourself so overwhelmed with the negative that it's hard to be positive? Have you ever been to the place where you find yourself so overrun by that which is south that you cannot lift your head up going north? Have you ever perhaps lived in a country, no a state, no a world that's going through a global pandemic that inhibits your ability and mind from focusing on Faith in God our Father who's always good, and instead we are bombarded, we are bombed, we are bothered, and we are burdened by all of the negative news that's going on in our world, no, in our families, no, in our own lives. All of us have been touched by problems and pains and pressures dealing with this global pandemic. I mean, we have places now we can't go. We have things now we cannot do. When did we think in January of 2020 that we'd be coming to church in a sputtering and kind of a spit of, of, of a people and persons as compared to how we started the year now? Watch this. Not concerned with whether or not we have a tie on or a Sunday go-to-meeting dress on, but everybody's in a mask. Who would have thought, Sheila, that we would start the year as seemingly normal and end up in an abnormal situation. Still, I want to raise this question to all of us, beginning with myself. Watch this, Fine. What are we waiting for when it comes to giving glory to God? What are we waiting for when it comes to giving thanks to God? What are we waiting for when it comes to giving our God his due? Because in the midst of every trial and tribulation, God has given us the key on how we can triumph in that trouble because he's a good God and he's a gracious God and he's able to do anything except fail. Brothers and sisters, I know all of us have been touched. I know I have in my own personal life, own personal family with chaos and with calamity, with sickness and with sorrow. But understand this, in the midst of all of that, God is still working out everything in our lives for our good and his glory. That deserves a shout. That in the middle of it all, God is still good. Oh, yes, he is. I know you don't believe that. Last night, last night, last night, uh, Sister Tiffany, Lady T, and I were invited to another pastor's house to watch a fight, watch a fight. I know some of you all did not see the fight. Some of you all do not indulge in anything that is anti-Jesus on a Saturday night. I understand that. And so normally, while I don't go out on a Saturday, I don't do much on a Saturday, a pastor invited us over his house last night to watch a fight, a fight. You didn't hear about the fight. It was a fight on pay-per-view. It involved, watch this now, Roy Jones Jr., boxing match against Michael Tyson. That is Iron Mike against Roy Jones. Jr. Some of y'all heard about the fight. Maybe you saw the fight. Maybe you bought the fight. It was $49.99. Pastor Ford did not buy the fight. I went to another house and watched the fight because I didn't have that $49. No, I did have the $49.99, but I hoboed in anyway on the fight at another person's house. Watch what happens. What are you waiting for? And so we're sitting at the house, and, 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 and I call the pastor back. I say, man, what time should we be there? He says, 7 o'clock. The fight starts at 7 o'clock. I said, okay, that's cool. And so finally, I said, cool in the gang. We're going to be there. She said, let's leave at 630. In fact, we had to leave early because she said, Sherman, I said, yes. Yeah. She said, I want to stop at Starbucks on the way to the house. And I thought to myself, then you stop at Starbucks this morning and the day before that and the day before that. And then watch this now. In the morning, it's now the evening. It's 630. I need to stop at Starbucks. Guess what we did? 
we stopped at Starbucks. And so on the way, Tom, to the house, we stopped at Starbucks. I'm telling you that. They say we got to the house a little after 7. I'm tripping. I'm running to the house. I'm texting him when I park. I said, man, we're outside. We're coming in. I I'm at the door. I'm trying to ring the doorbell. The doorbell is broke. You can push the button all day long. <laughs> doorbell ain't working. But the screen was, uh, was the door was open and the screen was there. I literally yelled, uh, Milton, y'all know who I'm talking about now. Milton, may come to the door. He comes to the door. He got a T-shirt on. He has to put on another shirt. I'm like, man, didn't you invite us over for the boxing match? You're putting on clothes. You got on a T-shirt, put on another T-shirt in front of my wife. Okay, that's cool. I understand. Everything's good. We get in the house, rush to the couch. They got a new couch. It's kind of a U-shaped couch with one of those big old cushions in the middle. Everybody in this room could have slept on that big old cushion in the middle. It's, it's, it's a beautiful house, beautiful setup, big screen TV, 715, no fight. They got rappers coming out, no fight. They got singers coming out, no fight. They got other pre-fight persons coming out in boxing, but it's not the main event. There is no fight. Here it is, 8 o'clock, no fight. Here it is. Some of y'all watched it, 9 o'clock, no fight. Here it is, 9.30, I'm tripping, saying I got to go home, no fight. Around 10 minutes to 10 or so, they begin to announce Roy Jones Jr. and Mike Tyson. I'm tripping. I'm angry. I'm upset. I'm a little agitated. I'm a little irritated. But watch this now. Somebody asked me, or maybe it was the Lord who asked me in, your, in my spirit, Sherman, what are you waiting for? And I'm saying, I'm waiting for Iron Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. I didn't come here to hear rappers. I didn't come here to see none of these other entertainers. I didn't come here to see really the pre-fight. I appreciate God, the pre-fight. But I came here to see the main event. And it occurred to me last night and right now that many of us show up at a certain place at a certain time looking for a certain thing and we're frustrated we're agitated we're irritated because we show up and we don't see what we're waiting for it becomes a question what are you waiting for in this COVID moment what are you looking for in, in this global pandemic, what is it you're pressing for? It may be what you're waiting for has already arrived and we just don't know it. It may be what we're looking for has already shown up and we just don't see it. It may be that the answer to our agonies and the eraser to our errors and the B-A-L-M, the bomb to our bruises, has already shown up. It may be that the sovereign Savior, the one who we're seeking to deliver us from this crisis and all of these problems in politics and race relations and all that's going on in our world has already shown up. In fact, I want to tell you this, and not only might that be the case, that is the case. And the devil has us distracted. Instead of focusing on the goodness and the love and the mercy and the grace of God and the grace that God has placed in the heart and in the minds of every person, red, yellow, black, white, thick, thin, intellectual, illiterate, Jew, Gentile, uptown, downtown, in this country or in the field, it doesn't matter who they are, Jesus Christ, watch this now, already has fixed every problem we have and here we are sitting around and waiting for him to show up. I know I lost you. I know you. What is he talking about? I'm talking about John chapter 5. The Bible says in John chapter 5, watch the verse now. Here's how it reads. The Bible says after this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there is at Jerusalem by the sheep gate, hear the verse, a, by, by the sheep market, a gate, a, a, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue, Bethesda. Everybody say Bethesda. You don't think this sermon fits our situation, but I promise you it does. Everybody say Beth means house. Everybody say Esda means mercy. Jesus is out of town. He shows up in town. He comes to a pool called Bethesda House of Mercy. Anybody here ever heard of Bethesda Hospital? We got them right now. There's Bethesda General Hospital right now. Why do we have hospitals? Because all of us are sick. I wish I had some. We may not be sick biologically, but some of us are sick spiritually, are we sick emotionally, are we sick psychologically, are we sick socially. Understand this, Bethesda is a name that means house of mercy. And here the Bible says in John chapter 5 that Jesus is out of town, shows up in town, comes to a pool called house of mercy. And when he arrives there, he finds sick people. I know there's not a shouting sound. 
I know you don't want to shout because you don't want to admit you're sick. Listen, just raise your hand in the air and just raise them like you just don't care and say, Lord, I'm sick too. <laughs> Every now and again, I need an antidote for my anxieties. Every now and again, I need some medicine for that which bothers my mind. Every now and again, I need God to give me that, 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 that pill is, that, that, that's going to fix my problem. He shows up. The Bible says, and right there by the location Jesus arrives at is a pool. The pool is called in the Hebrew tongue, house of mercy. I know why you're not following me yet. Watch what the passage is to teach us. It says, when he shows up at the house of mercy, there's no mercy. You ever gone someplace looking for one thing and you showed up and it's not there? Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me grab all of you right now. Uh, anybody here ever order from Amazon? Got everybody. <laughs> and, and, and you're waiting for your package, Lisa, to show up. And day one goes by, day two goes by, and, and, it, and it's not there yet. It, anybody here ever gone to the grocery store pre-Thanksgiving looking for the pudding mix or the cranberry sauce or whatever it is for your recipe and they're out of it? Jesus shows up. Watch the drama of this passage. Can you see him? He comes to town, Curtis. He shows up at a pool called House of Mercy. People are at the house of mercy pool looking for mercy, and there is no mercy. And then the master, who's also the Messiah, who's full of mercy, shows up. I raise the question again, what are you looking for? What are we, thank you, Sheila, waiting for? Suppose what you're searching for is searching for you. Suppose what you're looking for is looking for you. Brothers and sisters, get this now. I'm, I'm going to go slower. I'm going to treat you all like I do early worship. This morning I treated early worship like I did <laughs> late worship. I see this is a different group in here, maybe online too. Watch this now. Get this. It's possible that everything we need, no, it's a fact that everything we need, hold it, this is going to blow your mind, and want, is found in Jesus Christ. That's a fact. We got folks fighting and falling out and fussing and feuding over stuff that is feeble, that don't make any sense, and none of it is going to last forever. Did you catch that? Fussing and feuding, falling out, feeble. And none of it is going to last how long? Forever. That's a lot of Fs by a pastor named Fort. Now watch this. In John chapter 5, watch the passage. There was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus goes up to Jerusalem. There is at Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool which is called in the Hebrew, Bethesda, having five porches. And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, blind, halt, withered, and they're all what? Waiting for the troubling of the water. There we go, Sheila. We're waiting for Sheila. We're waiting for the water to be troubled. Now, here's the tragedy of this passage. The tragedy of this passage is this, is that the Bible goes on to say in John chapter 5, they're waiting, watch this now, Christian, for the troubling of the water, and the Bible says there's no proof or no record that the water was ever troubled. It's a legend. People are showing up at a pool. Let this sink in for an experience that none of them have ever experienced. Come on, Angie. It's a legend. I know why you're not shouting. 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 Because I opened up with Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. Boxing match last night. <sighs> They're both living what? Legends. I got started late. I asked myself, Shimon, what are you waiting for? I said, I'm waiting for this doggone fight to start. <laughs> and, and when it started, they were glimpses of what they used to be. I said during Sunday school, I, I was still not getting the ring with Iron Mike Tyson. I promise you, <laughs> they would, I would just go down. I would just, they'd say, Shimon, they haven't hit you yet. I know, I just, 
go down. They're at this pool for whatever their problem is. They have multiple problems at the pool. There's a great multitude, watch the word, of impotent folk. That's the word in the scripture. I-M-P-O-T-E-N-T. Potent means power. They are all suffering from a lack of power in their life in one place in their body or another. All of us, I don't care who we are, suffer from a lack of ability, watch the word, power, ability, in our lives in some, uh, or in at least one or more areas. Now, if you're like me, then you suffer from a lack of power in several areas. I know most of y'all just got one. I got several. I admit them all because I want the Lord to fill every one of them. And Jesus shows up. Got a house called Mercy, waiting on mercy, and there is no mercy, nor no proof of anything medicinal by any means that has helped any man or woman. They're there based on legend. Iron Mike Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. fought a fight last night based on their legend, their legendary status in days gone by. Ain't nobody seen him fight in a number of years? We all know Mike is a little special. We know Roy Jones Jr. is Roy Jones Jr., but people were paying $49.99. I didn't pay it. I didn't pay it. I went to the house, but I didn't pay it. <laughs> we didn't pay it. Didn't we find We didn't pay it. Ate some, he had pizza and wings. I didn't eat no pizza, no wings. I was so upset. I just, I don't want no pizza. I don't want no wings. I don't, his, the mama made banana pudding. I didn't want no banana. I ain't never had banana pudding. Because I looked at it. I just, I'm a texture guy. I just said, it's puddingy, it's texture. Never will I try banana pudding. Don't, don't get lost on banana pudding now. Just <laughs> nothing. They're waiting at the pool on legends. Do you see the connection? I went last night to see a fight based on their legendary status. The difference between the fight last night and John chapter 5 is that there's no record that anyone at the pool was ever healed once. Not one reported, watch this now, authorized healing, not one. The legend said that the water was troubled at a certain time. And whosoever then stepped into the water after the troubling of the water was made healed of whatsoever disease they had. Jesus shows up. There's no record of mercy. And mercy, and the master of mercy shows up at Bethesda General Hospital. At the house of mercy, best house, as the mercy. And he says, I'm here. Now, let me blow your mind. Let, let, let the Lord, not me, blow your mind on this. Brothers and sisters, please hear me on this, okay? Young people especially. Watch this now. You can live on legend or you can live on the Lord. A whole lot of us. I was, I was younger once, but we had legends. We wanted to be like whoever the legends were. Last night at the fight, uh, almost every entertainer was a rapper. They closed with Snoop. Now, you know, that was some old music. They, they closed with Snoop. Y'all don't know who Snoop. D-O to the double G. Y'all don't know Snoop Dogg. Now, they, they closed with Snoop. I may have some other people up there performing. When I was young, we used to look up to people. We always wanted to be like someone, follow the bouncing ball. If it was baseball, I wanted to be like the Bash Brothers in Oakland. Why? Because I'm from the Bay Area. Y'all don't know the Bash Brothers. I, I lost y'all on the Bash Brothers. Eh? Oakland A's, that's a baseball team. When I played soccer, we wanted to be like Pele. It's called the Black Pearl. He had this thing called a bicycle kick. He's a legend. <laughs> when I played basketball, I wanted to be like Magic Johnson. He was, again, California. He was in Southern California. Played for the Los Angeles Lakers. When I was young, come, come close, young people. When I was young, there was, there was a rap group out. I, I, I played them yesterday. Y'all have never heard of them, I promise you. Y'all ain't never heard of them. They're called the Sugar Hill Gang. <laughs> they had a son out called Rapper's Delight. Angie's in my age category, so she knows what I'm talking about. Rapper's 
delight. No young person said anything, Angela. They just looked like, who are you talking about? Uh, listen, I appreciate me some Tupac. Uh, I, the day before yesterday, I was playing my man Jay-Z, who I think is off the chain. His album 444, to me, is one of the best albums ever put out. But back in the day, <laughs> it was rapper's delight. There's another group out there uh, called Houdini. Uh, another group out there called Run. See, y'all ain't been in church all your life. DMC. <laughs> Entertainment, basketball, football. We want to emulate and model and be like someone other than who we are. It's escapism. While we should appreciate them, we should never try to copy them. Put a pen right here. Tweet this out. Please write this down what I'm about to give you from, watch this now, Albert Lewis Patterson Jr. in heaven now. You can take this to heaven with you. God made all of us originals and most of us will die carbon copy. Nobody looks like you. Nobody has your same eye color, your same uh, hair, your same texture, your same style, your same body type, your nose, your ears, all things about you are uniquely you, and we will go to the doctor and ask for an alteration on what God created. When I'm an original and I will choose to die a carbon copy, and the copy is never as good as the you got. They're at the pool. They have problem after problem after problem. Jesus shows up. Watch what Jesus does. This is so telling. He addresses one person in this passage at the pool and one person, O-N-L-Y. It's mind-blowing. The Bible says the pool had five porches, steps, porticles, layers, See a big jacuzzi. Y'all see the big jacuzzi in your mind? You see how you step down, step, 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 and there's water at the bottom? Pastor, how do you know that's what it looks like? Because I've seen it in person on my two trips to Israel. I've seen it. People are just on every step. They're sick. Can y'all see them in your imagination? Y'all saw them in the summer months here in Arizona. Arizona has more pates, more pools per square mile than any state in the country. Why? Because it's 4,202 degrees here in the summer. And, and, and you've seen the jacuzzis at the pool or the steps going down to the pool. Imagine the pool being jam-packed. There is a small puddle of water in the middle. Everyone on every step in every place, every person is sick. They all have come seeking mercy. Can y'all see this? Somebody's eyes are blinded. Somebody's ears are stopped up. Somebody's limbs are missing. And watch what Jesus does. This is what's mind-blowing. Young people, hear me, please. Watch this now. Jesus decides to only talk to one. That's me saying mind-blown. As, re as recorded in Scripture, as recorded for this passage, the Bible says, and he comes up to one man and says, it says to him, do you want to be made whole? Here's the question. Why does Jesus know what criteria does Jesus use to choose the one and not the other? Are y'all ready? <laughs> There's 99 people in the room, and he chooses one. <laughs> Jesus chooses this man because this account and this story is going to bring glory to God could it be what we're waiting for has already arrived and maybe in part while we're not yet active and available for God's glory is because we have too many things between us and Jesus which prohibit glory from going to God. Is that just possible? That God knows based on Sherman's track record that every time I get glory, uh, every time I promise to give him glory and I receive it, and then I keep it for myself. Diana Ross and the Supreme. What is it? Uh, Beyonce's group. I forgot their name now. That makes my point. 
Destiny's Child. Ain't nobody, what, what's the destiny of Destiny's Child? It's done. That's the destiny of Destiny's Child. But there's only one who's still receiving glory. And the name is Beyonce. No. I wish y'all would hear what I'm saying to you. Watch what happens in this passage. Jesus goes up to the man. Do you want to be made whole? Here's the criteria for being made whole. What do you want? I want to be made whole. We can never be healed until we admit and recognize and address what it is we're sick with. <laughs> a lot of us look in the mirror, we lie to ourselves every day. And I don't just mean the mirror looking at my hair or lack thereof or a sag versus a lift or a color uh, versus uh, another layer. I'm talking about we have something that is missing in us without Jesus. It has nothing to do with color, our culture, our class, our country. It has everything to do with Christ. And, and, and all of us will be thirsting for something that only Jesus can fill. A man can't feel it, a boyfriend can't feel it, a girlfriend can't feel it, a woman can't feel it, a drug can't feel it, a feeling can't feel it. No, there's a place inside all of us that was designed to be occupied by God and God alone. He's the only one who perfectly fits right there. Jesus said, you want to be made whole? He says to Jesus, watch his excuse. He says, Lord, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. Water troubled. Yeah, you ever... See anybody get healed? Well, no, but word on the street is. Yeah, you ever see the doctor report him? Everybody get healed? No, but I've been here. Watch this now. The verse says he's been here 30, in this condition, 38 years. Anybody at least 38 or 38 minutes old and been waiting on something that you've been promised, but you've never received any proof for it, yet you're still waiting for it? It's going to come one day. Anybody know this term, Ponzi scheme? <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong group now. Anybody had anybody ever try to sell you insurance when you didn't need none? Anybody been paying into something that you're supposed to get a return from, and here it is 20 years later, and you still ain't got no return? My, my life insurance policy with the church uh, recently retired. I mean, uh, what's the word? Expired. And they called me, Pastor Poor, yeah, your policy about to is about to be retired, uh, be expired. What do you want to do? I said, well, let's talk about the policy. I'm, I'm at home. I'm talking about the policy. Okay, now how much did I pay in? They told me, how much was it a month? For 20 years, I paid this much a month. And this, 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 this. I said, what's the total? And she said, hold on, laid on the phone. I said, no, let me do the math. I said, that's the total? I said, how much of it is left? Well, you don't have anything left. That's just a monthly fee, so nothing happened. It was a term policy. Anybody here know what I mean when I say term policy? And so once the term, I wish I had somebody now, is over, there's no recompense. By the way, Pastor Ford, yes, ma'am, if you want to renew this policy, you're now this age as opposed to that age. <laughs> We're going to charge you more for even less than what you got this time around. I ask the question again, anybody here waiting on an angel that may never show up? Is your, is your hope in Arizona lottery? Or the financial club that you just joined? This man, I'm done now. You know, I got three more I'm done, Curtis. I got three more I'm done. I'm done, shows up at the pool. The Bible says he's been in this condition 38 years. <laughs> Listen, Sheila, I might have quit after 38 minutes. You hear me, Sheila? I might have said, I'm done. Now watch what happens. The man shows up. I did this in early worship. Some of y'all know I'm using my right hand. Sheila knows I'm using my right hand. <laughs> early worship knows why I'm doing that. Because I was at the pool, and I never got the healing for this shoulder right here. Watch what happened. 38 years, not seen a miracle, not seen any movement, not seen anyone healed medicinally or otherwise. 
looking for mercy. And then here comes the Messiah, the King of mercy. He walks over and by and through everyone else at the pool. Uh, the Bible calls the, the, uh, uh, um, the people at the pool a multitude. He stops at one and says, do you want to be made whole? Response, I have no man. You're looking for mercy. You're looking at the Messiah. And you're looking for a man to put me into the pool. I didn't ask you nothing about no pool, nothing about no legend, nothing about no water. Ask you, do you want to be made whole? Why? Because you're partial, you're incomplete. Anybody here, raise your hand, willing to admit that there's been any point in your life that you were not complete on your own? <laughs> Here's the conclusion. Jesus says, uh, I got a solution for you. I got an answer for what ails you. I have an eraser for your errors. I have a bomb for your bruises. Jesus, what I need to do, I'll do whatever that is. He said, get up. You understand I haven't walked in 38 years. He said, get up. You do understand I'm paralyzed from the waist down. Rise. Hold it. Sheila, one, two, three. I love you, Sheila, honestly. Watch what happened. Y'all don't know that either. Y'all still too young. Watch this. Let's say the bed is my jacket. The man, Kevin, I'm going to walk down, rises, and before this, he cannot walk. He's been in a down position for 38 years. Sometimes you could be down so long until down looks like up. You can get an inch off the ground, and you could swear you were in the high rise. No, you're an inch off the ground. But some of us don't realize it because we're too used to being that. It tells him to rise. The only way this man gets up, son, is by faith. He doesn't know that he's up until he tries to get up. He doesn't get up until he puts some movement to his mouth. Could it be that we're still where we are because we have all mouth and no movement? He gets up. Remember that? Remember that knee bone? I mean, the foot bone said to the ankle bone and ankle bone. Y'all ever heard the preacher preach on Ezekiel 37, the valley of what? Dry bones? I'm in the right church, right? He gets up. And then Jesus says this. And he says, now, now that you're standing up, and, and, and be one of the people who's in the crowd. Don't hit me yet, Curtis. Be one of the people who's in the crowd. And they're all around the water, and they're saying, this guy has been healed, and he didn't get in the water. So the multitude is going, what's going on? I, I stepped over someone. I kicked someone down. I thought I was going to be next. I'm, I'm closest at the bottom step. I'm right there by the water. And uh, it's my turn, and it's my turn, and it's my turn. And way up yonder, maybe on step number five at the top, not closest to the water, farthest away from a mercy that is not mercy at all, Jesus tells him to get up. And this man stands up, and everybody says, hold it. Before I got here, I heard about him. Remember, he'd been there 38 years. Let our minds be blown right now. Poof. It's possible that we've been in our situation so long so that God can get the glory and others can see it. Because it's hard for you to hear or see what I'm saying when I don't have any proof of my situation. So some people at the pool were saying, now hold it. Now I know he ain't faking. Because when I arrived, he was here. And he ain't never moved from that step. Why? Because he's paralyzed. And I know JoJo. I bring him something every day. I got a cane, Sherman, I can't see, but I can pat, 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 pat my way. And I know he's always there at that same spot. Maybe God can use our agony for his glory, our problem for his own good pleasure. This man gets up. People are tripping. Look, look, look. Oh, my God, my, do you see it? Do you see it? Yeah, but he didn't get in the water. Yeah. He didn't need the water. He needed the water walker. Name Jesus Christ. 
And then Jesus said, okay, now, I need to do step two, get up. It's step one. That's what I'm saying to us. Now, take up. He said, take up your bed. Remember, the man is laying on a pallet or a bed. It's, it's, it's likely made of cloth with two boards, long rods, and then there's cloth in the middle. And he takes up his bed. and Perhaps it's collapsible or it collapses. He's been laying on the bed for 38 years. Jesus said, now I need you to walk. Watch the steps. Rise. Boom. Take up your bed. That which is holding, was holding you and you're now holding. Those legs who did not work, they're not working. Now walk. I don't know, but I imagine, Angie, I imagine it, Angie. I don't know. I imagine, Thomas, that with every step, his head got a little taller. His back got a little straighter. And he became a little more proud with every step. And he started then moving from a walk to a leap. From a leap to a jump, he started screaming and yelling, and his voice that was cracking and low because he could not lift up his esophagus right this now to, 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 to get oxygen out. All of a sudden, he's screaming and hollering and praising God. And everybody around him is going, I want some of that. <laughs> but get this meaningless mercy that I spent insurmountable moments and minutes waiting for to arrive. I see the Messiah, and I don't know who he is necessarily, but I know he just did something to somebody who I know was lame. What are you waiting for? Now, uh, the same thing I said earlier, worship, five, and I'm out. Okay, if I don't stop in five, Curtis got it. Curtis, the Bible says, and on the same day was the Sabbath. I'm done. The Sabbath is the day of rest. In the New Testament, the Sabbath, Sabbath, Shabbat, is Saturday, Sabado. It's the day where there's rest. The nation of Israel used it because God in the book of Genesis said to them, watch this now, we see it in the six days that God creates the heavens and the earth, and on the seventh day, what does he do? He rests. We see it again in the book of Exodus chapter 20 when the Bible says when God is giving Moses the Ten Commandments to give the nation, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. I'm going someplace by application. People are not going to like it. Watch it, man. They're not going to, they may not like it there. Watch this now. We take every day and give God no day that we don't keep it holy. The word holy may is set apart, sanctified unto God. Let me tell you what May did. Y'all don't know who May is. May is Francine. Y'all don't call Francine May. I thought my name for Francine. Francine. <laughs> Her name is Fanny May. That's my May right there. That's my Francine and I have been together 27 years, 20, almost 28 years working together at this church. That's my May. That's my May. I didn't even give her that name. She got it in childhood before I knew her, but I've just stolen it. Now, watch this. The Sabbath day, May, is for God. Y'all can get mad at me for this. You can walk out for what I'm about to say. I hope you don't, but you can. As I shared it this morning in a live video, Facebook. God only asked for one day. For his church to gather and to worship him, and we won't give him a day. I can't come to church now. It's COVID. But I saw you yesterday. Tiffany and I were in California doing the honeymoon, and we bought some pants. We were at some mall, some outdoor mall in the Bay Area. She can't, she can't go buy a mall. I, I, Father, in the name of Jesus, just deliver her from. I don't understand this. Can't go buy a mall nor a Starbucks. It's just like the Holy Ghost lives at Starbucks in a mall. And so I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. And so we're at the, we're at the mall, and um, she buys these jeans. And then yesterday, she like these jeans. They were damaged, and we had to take them back. So we go to the outlet mall. I'm talking, I'm, I'm in my sermon. Go to the outlet mall. My favorite resort here is uh, the Sheridan Waterhorse, uh, 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 Sheridan Waterhorse Pass Resort and Spa, South Channel. Hands down, another one of my favorite. Ain't your favorite, but that's okay. It's my favorite. Because it's close enough to me where I feel like I'm out of town. 
see the wild horses running around. It's all of that. The, the sanctuary is nice, a little more contemporary than I like. I'm a little more old school than you guys know. Some of y'all like, no, we know you old school. I like, I like classic and contemporary mixed together. Go to the outdoor mall, and we're driving in. More importantly, I'm driving in. And Tiffany never drives. I mean, unless it's like a need. And she's like, she want to get there. OK, I'm going to drive, OK? It's never OK, OK? I'm going to drive, OK? She gets in the car, breaking every law. <laughs> On the phone at the same time, I have to take the phone. Come back, Sherman, come back. Go to the store, pull it up in the, in, the, in the mall. Sheila, I mean this, Sheila. It is unbelievable. May, people are everywhere. I started talking about malls. Boy, I should have brought up May, huh, dear? Boy, that May, boy, she can. Okay, here we go. Francine can shop. Boy, I promise y'all. Here we go. She's shopping now. She just bought a new house. She's shopping. Don't hit me, Curtis. Don't hit me. Let me hit it. Watch this now, Curtis. Cars everywhere. We have to drive around trying to find a space. People are crammed in. It's outdoor mall, which I think added to Dr. Don. More people feeling comfortable outdoors. But I'm tripping. Go to the store. Kate Spade had a line around the corner. Nike. You know, they want to let you in. You know, 20 people at a time. I'm going, what they got in there? Crack? What, what's going on? What they got in the store? Is it a drug? I mean, what, what's in the store? <laughs> Nike. And I said, how come people can come everywhere except Curtis? You here, Curtis. We need the choir back in. These two ladies need a vacation paid for about two years for free. <laughs> Two-year vacation on the church. Let's go. Hawaii, you just go to Hawaii on, on the church. They work about as hard as I do. Kevin, need, he, he needs about four years off. So. Sabbath is a day of rest. God asked for one. I want to thank you for being here today. I really do. I really do. I really do. But there's something wrong with us when we won't give him anything. I'm online, but you're not online at the mall. I saw you at the mall. Because you didn't see me. I saw you at the club. I saw you at the club. What were you doing there? I was there supporting Anthony. I saw you at the club. Where were we at, Anthony? Where was that? West Alley. We were at West Alley Barbecue Restaurant next Friday. And, and Anthony's band is playing. So what do we do at our church? We support one another. And you ain't going to hell to listen to Anthony play jazz. You're not going to go to hell for that. Some of y'all need to get over that, boy. You, you act like he bobo she's on him. I ain't even no tongue. You're just talking stuff. I'm, I'm getting lost now. I see people, thank you, Sheila, out, and my mind is blown because we won't give the Lord a Sabbath. Jesus heals the man on the Sabbath. This is my clothes, Curtis. On the Sabbath, he heals, which is against the law. Not supposed to do any work on the Sabbath. Maybe online watchers and in sanctuary watchers, maybe the reason we're not healed is because we don't want to do any work on the Sabbath. Come here, Jesus. Sherman, yeah. The Sabbath was made for man. Uh, was the man made for the Sabbath? God gave the Sabbath to man a day of rest so we could focus on him. And I understand we have to do it virtually. I get that. But that's something we should do without limit no matter where we are. And when we can, we should not forsake the assembly of ourselves together, Hebrews, book of Hebrews, as the manner of some is. What are you waiting for has already arrived, Curtis? All we need 
is to say, Lord, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of whatever it is you need. Not my brother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, in the need of, you fill in the blank, whatever it is. Are you hurting today? Well, are you so hurting again? Oh, I'm hurting. Jesus called. If, if, you, if, you're, if you're here and you have a need, I'm saying to you this, today is your day to be healed. You ain't got to wait on no angel. If you want prayer, this is our invitation online watchers. You want to come to Christ as Savior. You want to join church if you want to become a member who is under what we call watch care. I'm only in Arizona for a little while, and I want a physical church to come to. You can come for whatever reason it is. If you need individual prayer, you can come. But if you say, Pastor, today the, the sermon resonated with me, and I want prayer for the area I need mercy in, would you stand where you are? You ain't got to come up. You ain't got to come up. If you want to come up, you can social distance. But I just want to pray with you. Pastor, I need prayer for the area that I need mercy in. Pastor, I'm tired. Online, if that's you, just write down there, it's me, Pastor, I'm standing. Just write down, it's me, Pastor, I'm standing. I, I need mercy from he who is mercy. If you're here and you say, Pastor, I'm tired of waiting on angels. I'm tired of waiting on the legend of a water being troubled. We have a number of people here standing, and we're going to pray together in the sanctuary, and I want to pray with you on the World Wide Web. And we're going to ask God to bless us. Boy, that's a perfect song. Thank you, sir. Let's pray together. Father, God, we thank you and praise you for your son, the Christ, for your Holy Spirit. And God, now in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your love, mercy, and grace. Let your will be done in us. And Father, we admit right now that in many cases we've been searching for answers from legends who don't even really exist. And then, God, some of those legends who exist, they're so old now they can't perform the way that they should. But, Lord, you are our legendary Lord. You're our God. You're our King. And we know that you have all the mercy we need for all the misery we encounter. So right now, we're standing on our feet, acknowledging that we need you. Father, I ask that you would heal every man, every woman, every boy, every girl that's standing right now that is in need of mercy for whatever these moments in their lives are challenging them with. Father, would you heal them as you did the lame man at the pool of Bethesda? Would you heal me? Would you heal us? Would you heal the online watchers? And Father, let us remember that you are the source of our strength. We give your name glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Everybody shout amen. Everybody shout hallelujah. Come on, let's give God praise for as many blessings. Come on, everybody stand together. Let's get ready to go. I, my, in total, Come on, come on, come on, Curtis. Keep going for a minute. Grab that mic. Good. To you. Everybody together. If you remember this, come on, just sing it with him. Come on, Curtis. Oh, I will live. My, my life. Close with this. Everybody, you are, come on, let's sing together, you are.
the strength of my life. Come on. I lift my hands. This is our close. I lift my hands in total praise to you. To you. Amen. you for the day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. Bless and be with us now as we prepare to leave this place never your presence. Thank you for the persons who are here. We pray that you will give us traveling grace and mercies as we go. Let your will be done in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray it. Everybody shout amen. Wait for your benediction. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. May the Lord give you peace. Return the blessing toward me. Say, Pastor Ford. Say, Lady T, Lord give you peace. Lord give you peace. Give your neighbor a great hug and a kiss. See Francine if you want to serve on our anniversary committee next, next month. Okay? Love you. See you this week. You are, come on, you.